Modern visitors to the old city of Jerusalem find a different city from antiquity. There is a reason for this. The present layout of the old city of Jerusalem is based on a plan implemented by the Romans after the Jewish temple was destroyed in 70 CE. Emperor Hadrian's empire extended from Scotland as far as Iran. The pantheon he built in Rome, still standing today, reflected his ecumenical and Hellenistic views, which he projected onto the colonies. He imposed this worldview on Jerusalem by erasing the Jewish remnants of the city, renaming it Aelia Capitolina. Roman cities were typically set on a north-south cardo with an east-west decuminus. While this particular section of the cardo came later, it gives an excellent reconstruction of the city from the time. While this southern part of the cardo was extended by the later Byzantines, the northern cardo was instituted under Hadrian. A breakthrough of understanding by archaeologists came from the tiled mosaic of the Byzantine Madaba map, which identified the key buildings and streets. It's still possible to walk from the Zion Gate in the south, treading the same path all the way to the Damascus Gate in the north. While walking northward along the Cardo Maximus, at the midpoint of the Cardo, where the east-west decuminus meet, is the seventh station of the Cross for Pilgrim. Inside is a tetrapylon which marked the junction. Even the modern layout reflects the original pattern of the intersecting streets. Upon arriving at Damascus Gate, there was a semicircular plaza. One can look south with the Cardo Maximus on the right and the secondary Cardo on the left. The modern Damascus Gate, built by the Ottomans in the 16th century, incorporated Hadrian's triple-arched Porta Neapolitana. The easternmost arch forms the entrance to the Roman plaza interior. These rooms within the Damascus Gate form the towers, where Roman troops guarded the northern entrance and could view the city from the rooftop onto the Cardo below. The arcaded semicircular plaza and well-worn pavement boasted a large column, which appears prominently now and even on the Madaba map. The east-west decuminus from Aelia Capitolina may be approached via the modern Lion's Gate and is now part of the Via Dolorosa, or Way of Sorrows. Hadrian renovated the Pools of Bethesda, a pool with five porches, in which Jesus healed the lame man in John chapter 5. A cult center of healing, Hadrian erected a temple of Asclepius and Serapis. The remains of the center porch and southern pools are in situ and quite deep. Walking along the decuminus at the corner of the Jewish temple was the Castle Antonia. The spring of this triple arch, the Eke Homo, dates to Hadrian or possibly earlier. The other arcades are embedded into the Sisters of Zion Church. Under the convent, the pavement of a Roman forum is situated by the corner of the Struthian Pools. These pools were open to the air in Herod's time, but later covered over by Hadrian when he built the plaza. Meanwhile, at the location of Golgotha, the site of Jesus' crucifixion outside the Judgment Gate, Hadrian built a temple to Aphrodite. The arcades from Hadrian's temple in the Alexander Nevsky Church unwittingly mark the spot for posterity. Within the present Holy Sepulchre at the lowest levels is the entry into the ancient quarry and base of Hadrian's retaining structure for his cult temple and over which Emperor Constantine built the Holy Sepulchre in the 4th century. Just south of the modern Holy Sepulchre is the Muristan, a second forum which Hadrian built. Even now, there are several pylons marking the territory. The 10th Roman Legion formed their headquarters here and assisted in building Aelia Capitolina. This is evidenced by the numerous inscriptions on their clay tiles, as well as tabulae and sate, particularly the renovation of Herod's aqueduct at Caesarea. 
Near the Jaffa Gate in the Christian Quarter, a pylon from the 10th Roman Legion is still in situ. After the Temple Mount was plowed under after the first Jewish revolt, a temple to Jupiter was built in its place. A reused Latin inscription over the double Hulda Gate may have been part of an equestrian statue to Hadrian or his successor Antoninus Pius. Some propose that the temple at Baalbek in Lebanon might have been very similar to the Temple Capitolinus built in Jerusalem. A rare inscription in Latin and dedicated to Hadrian now sits in front of the Rockefeller Museum, home of the Israel Antiquities Authority. Jerusalem is an inexhaustible treasure and the layer of history from Hadrian's Aelia Capitolina is no exception.